The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. Across from me is Malik Hill. I'm Joey Tysick. And today we have Mr. Hollywood himself, Joe Johnson. You got a crossover. Man, I love really that intro. Crossover. I feel like ripping my warm-ups off. Exactly. <laughs> That's the thought process. Um, today there's literally hardly any news whatsoever. There's some NFL injuries, I guess, in training camps and stuff like that. But we don't want to talk about injuries. We'll wait till we know the outcomes. Um, and so we decided we're going to have another fun episode. We're going to talk about our top 10 favorite sports movies. And that's why we brought the movie man, Joe in today. And so I wanted to ask each of you guys, I'll start with Joe. What makes sports movies enjoyable for you? Enjoyable. Um, you know, that uplifting feel good, uh, ending that a lot of these movies have, even though, you have to be careful because if all sports movies had that uplifting feel good ending, it just becomes predictable and repetitive and cliche. So I, I like movies that have a variation on that formula. And even though it's not necessarily a movie, I thought Ted Lasso did a great job of uh, having fun and excitement throughout the series, but these guys didn't spoiler alert, didn't necessarily win the whole enchilada. Mm-hmm. And so it was, it was more, it felt more like real life. Yeah. Malik, what do you like about sports movies besides just being sports fans in general? What is it that gets you into a sports movie? What the, makes a good sports despite movie? Being, despite being a major sports fan, it's the, the underdog stories, the, Seeing, uh, it, it's it's hard to describe <laughs> without like describing why I love sports so much. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the underdog story is the, like one of the biggest things. Just like seeing a group of guys come together, seeing like a, a coach come in that nobody respects or nobody believes in, and like bring a program together. They those types of things. Yeah, like including great actors, a great story. Just it it when it works, it's it's amazing to watch yeah. and even if it, even though it's formulaic a lot of times, like you said, with the good guys winning a lot of times. Yeah. It's, it's been done so many different times that it still works. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of the same way. I like the compelling story. I need some good acting. Um, but I like it to feel, I mean, playing sports when I was younger, I want it to feel similar to that feel like, does it feel authentic? Is it, is it somewhat real without being real? Um, and then, I, honestly, for me, for a lot of sports movies, the soundtrack actually can be a big deal. How they portray those big moments, um, the way that they film it, the way that they put music behind it that like upli- uplifts that moment can sometimes be a big deal. You know, the challenge that sports movies face is how do you compare or compete with actual sport? Yeah. Like, for, for actual sports – there's so many moments that I have where I'm laying on the couch, you know, the game looks like it's out of reach. And then all of a sudden some magical moment happens and yeah. Al Michaels is going, he did what? Mm-hmm. And how do you top that? Yeah. To me, real life supersedes sports movies. Right. That, that's the hard part is recreating those moments because even though they realistically probably could happen in real life, you know that at the end of the day you're watching a movie, exactly. so it just it just takes that little bit away, and that's what's so hard about sports movies. Um, so today we'll do our top ten. We'll kind of try to go briefly through the the first five or so, and then we get into the, the nitty gritty, the meat and potatoes, as I like to always say. Um, but we have a couple honorable mentions. I know you guys have a few, so I'll mention mine really quick, just because they go into one theme. I have two honorable mentions that I just wanted to mention, and they both go into that kind of comedic sports genre. And for me, that doesn't really fit into my top 10 for the most part. Maybe there's one outlier that we'll get to eventually. But 
Talladega Nights and Cool Runnings. <laughs> Those are two that are Listen, Cool Runnings, you are you hit me in the heart yes. right now. <laughs> that's like that's, that's a special movie to our me. childhood for the most yes. part, it feels like. It's a mix of comedy and, you know, it's got some real life backing to it. Um, the acting is great, the story is good, and it's just a fun kind of kids Disney movie. It was Disney, right, that made Cool Runnings. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So. Um and then Talladega Nights is just it was that Will Ferrell peak era. Yeah. Um, he was just rolling them out like year after year. Yeah. Like the, if you're not first, you're last, still a great quote. Mm-hmm. People and, if, use. and there's not too many comedy movies that I can like keep watching over and over, but that's definitely, definitely one of them yeah. that I had to mention. Now, ironically, probably eight of my top 10 would be considered comedies. <laughs> I love wow. comedies <laughs> and most of my movies in my top 10, are comedies and and since you brought up Talladega Nights, which is in my top ten, uh, prior to Talladega Nights, there weren't a lot of NASCAR movies. Yeah, uh, outside of Days of Thunder, what really is yeah. like the NASCAR? And I, it, it's like that's just a t- fertile ground for stories and compelling stories, and uh, there just weren't a lot of NASCAR movies, and I don't know why that is. I don't know if NASCAR just wasn't playing ball with Hollywood, or yeah. if they just didn't think that that reached a mass o- mass audience, but right? Uh, I thought I thought those two movies, Days of Thunders and Days of Thunder and Talladega Nights, were were great and mm-hmm. enormously entertaining. Yeah, um, Malik, what's uh, some of your honorable mentions, and then we'll go back and forth with you and Joe for a little bit, okay. talking about some of them. So the I, I'm going to put my first few honorable mentions in a group I like to call movies that aren't like of the highest quality, but I still love them. <laughs> the guilty pleasures. Yes. Yeah, part of like part of it was like childhood love like space jam childhood love like <laughs> seeing michael jordan in the looney tunes it, it was mm-hmm. and the soundtrack was incredible it was it's a part of my childhood you know nostalgia goes a long way yeah, yeah. even like you said even if a movie's not all that great if you have fond memories of being a kid and watching that movie and as you get older you're like is it my top 10 or whatever and it's like all right <laughs> that nostalgia factor has yeah. a big reason yeah. for that mm-hmm. and then another one Another Disney franchise. I did. I couldn't pick one movie, so I just picked the franchise. <laughs> this one is actually of somewhat decent quality, but it was mainly for '90s kids. The Mighty Ducks franchise mm. almost made my list. Yeah, it just. I, I have a Charlie Conway jersey of my <laughs> own. I I loved this franchise so much. The Flying V. Yeah. Just I I loved all of it. Mm-hmm. It it was the the cast was so fun. The Bash Brothers. The ba- yeah, it, everything about it was so like of its time, but it was so cool, mm-hmm. and the characters stood out, and it it was just a really fun franchise for mostly kids, but solid movies overall. How many movies did they do? I think three. I think they did three movies, and then they have a new Disney Plus show. And then they yeah, did an the animated new- series as well, where they were forgot, actual, with ducks. actual ducks. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, and then the last one in that category for me would be there are many, I don't know about many, but there there are a few really good high school football movies like Friday Night Lights. Um, Oh, my God, there's one I just literally forgot. Friday Night Lights and there Remember the others. Titans? Remember the Titans, yes. Okay. Those are probably like the best. But there is one that I don't know why. I saw it when I was a kid, and it just – I, it became my favorite high school football movie. It is not the greatest movie, and the acting isn't the best. But I, I love the characters in the story. Varsity Blues. Mm. James Van Der Beek. I don't know if I've seen that one. Listen, I don't think I've seen it. Is, it's a late 90s. I think like it's like an MTV produced movie. Mm. Like it's like a it's like made for like teens of like the late 90s, early 2000s. Okay. It covers some like actual serious things like. James, not uh, James Vanderbeek, but yeah, James Vanderbeek is like the backup quarterback that has to take over for Paul Walker, who was the starting quarterback. <laughs> oh, yeah. He breaks his leg. He's a star quarterback. James Vanderbeek has to come in and take over. John Voight is the head coach. He's actually really good in the movie. He's like a old school Southern football coach that cares about winning more than like player safety. It, it's mm. it's a really cheesy movie, but I I just love it personally. Mm. Yeah, Varsity Blues. It's it's a fun, entertaining movie. And then movies that are actually of somewhat higher quality, uh, Blue Chips. Really, really good movie. That's about, what I was thinking of. Yeah, about cheating in college basketball. Shaquille O'Neal and Penny Hardaway kind of like emerged on the scene in that movie. They had big parts in it. 
uh, is it, it goes into gambling and yeah, cheating in sports and paying for players and all that type of stuff. The dirtier parts of college basketball. Mm-hmm. Really good movie from the nineties. And then, uh, Cool Runnings. <laughs> nice. Really good. Uh, uh, I think one of the last John Candy movies. Yeah. Yeah, and he and was, that was really that was good. A phenomenon when it came out. Yeah. yeah. And based off a true story, I think, which yes, is, is really it cool. Is. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then a uh, really underrated college college basketball movie. I don't know if many people have seen Glory Road. The story of the 19- – Spoiler, that's on my list. Yeah, the story of the 1966 te- Texas Western college basketball team, the first team to start five black players, and they won the national championship and beat Kentucky, who was the juggernaut of the era. It was unprecedented at the time. So, yeah, that's, that's a movie that I really loved as a kid. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that pretty much rounds out my honorable mentions. All right. Keeping in mind these are honorable mentions, some of these probably could have made my top ten. The first one I'm going to throw out, I'm probably going to anger people from my generation <laughs> because this probably is in a lot of people's top tens, especially from the area I grew up in. 1984's Karate Kid. Oh, man. Uh, not nice. in my top ten, but I do love it. Uh, Pat Morita was nominated for an Oscar, I believe. I didn't know he was nominated for an Oscar. I believe he was for that role. And I've met some of the cast members, and uh, it was so iconic. I visited uh, the beach where, you know, the Mm -hmm. famous crane pose and all that. Uh, So an iconic movie. It could easily be in my (laughs) top ten, but it just barely Now that's one that it crossed my mind and immediately left. (laughs) I am a hater of the Karate Kid. Why are you a I don't I don't hate it as being a hater, but I just don't think it's a very good movie. Wow. And that is just that is I just a, don't enjoy the movie. Wow. That is a that's a take right there. That's a hot take. He kicked him in the face. That's an illegal move. It is. And you Listen, know what? Someone did an edit. It's a movie. Like, like the whole ending is just kind of it's very off putting to me. And now this is I'm I didn't watch it in the time, obviously. I wasn't born then. But you go back and you watch it and you're like he just kicked him in the face. Listen, ca- yeah, catching, so flies with like, cho- catching flies with chopsticks isn't very real, Joey. <laughs> that's not really. Uh, to me, that's a little more believable. <laughs> you know what? You can go online and you can find like a re-edited trailer where Daniel uh, LaRusso is the villain in the movie. Mm-hmm. And the way they portray I've seen, it, yes, you're I've like, seen that. wow. Yeah, they try to, say, to put a spin on it. Yeah, I've seen that one. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of an a-hole <laughs> yeah. in that movie. Have you ever checked out Cobra Kai, the show? No, I never got into the show. I heard I, the I first should, like two or three seasons are actually like great. Like they do a yeah. great job yeah, like maintaining the story when they're adults. And as much as I love Jackie Chan, I had no interest in the remake the Jayden with Smith. the Jayden. I saw that in theater. <laughs> That's one of those unnecessary like it you Very did innocent. not Justin need Bieber the on the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, that's that's an abomination. Mm. Uh, you know, one thing about my entire list, my top ten and my uh, honorable mentions, I, 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 this wasn't really intentional, but I have such a variety of sports on here. I don't just kind of dwell on one type of sport. So, on my mm. honorable mentions list, I have uh, two wrestling movies. Uh, one is The Wrestler, which came out in 2008 with Mickey Rourke, yeah. and I believe he was Oscar nominated. And that's probably like um, his last like great part. Yeah, and and that was fantastic about an aging wrestler just trying to glom on, cling on to that f- fame that's long since behind him, and that ambiguous ending and everything is really really good. Uh, the other wrestling movie that made my honorable mentions list, Nacho Libre, oh. which I don't know. Man. I love that pick. I love it. I, I'm tempted to call it a guilty pleasure, but it's a, it's I a, love it. It is a underrated comedy, yeah. so it's not really a guilty pleasure. And it's not it's for a, everybody. Yeah. It's one of Jack Black's like better movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I love Nacho Libre. I own it, and I could watch it again and again and again. Mm-hmm. Uh, another movie, another comedy, 2004's Dodgeball. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, if you can dodge a wrench. That's yeah. just out of my top ten. Uh, Happy Gilmore. And I have an unusual large number of racing movies on my my list because I'm a car guy. But I love the Love Bug movies. Okay. Um, the first, uh, Herbie the Love Bug, which came out in 1968, focused heavily on racing. And that was a classic. The second one that came out... Um, 
Herbie rides again. I just watched it again recently. It was terrible. And part of the reason is that there's no racing. Hmm. He's trying to protect some little old lady from getting her home <laughs> demolished. Uh, but then the third one comes back with Herbie goes to Monte Carlo. That came out in 1977. And Herbie gets a love interest in that movie. <laughs> and so that's what, if, that's one of what about favorites. Herbie fully loaded? Was, that's the only Herbie movie on Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan. Lohan. Um, you know, I went to see that in a the theater when it came out, and uh, he's a kid's movie. Care much for it? They, they like use CGI for Herbie, which yeah. bugged yeah. me. It's like it's a car. It wasn't it. terrible. Let's say that. Yeah, but, but it was unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. And then another racing movie on my honorable mention list. Uh, this goes way back, 1966, the year I was born. Movie called Grand Prix, starring James mm. Garner, Garner, who gained fame as uh, Jim Rockford on the Rockford Files. But uh, Grand Prix is one of the greatest racing movies I ever saw. They mounted cameras to those, you know, '60s era Indy cars, and you feel like you're right there on the track with these racers, and mm-hmm. it's it's riveting. I actually like it better than Le Mans, which uh, starred Steve McQueen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried watching Le Mans, and I found it kind of boring, but uh, Grand Prix is riveting. So if you like racing movies, check out Grand Prix. Mm. Nice. All right, on to the top ten. I'm going to try to quickly go. The top th- five? What? You said on to the top ten. We're doing top ten. You didn't do your homework. <laughs> I thought <laughs> – I thought the honorable mentions were basically a stretch, a stretch of the top ten. Oh, no. Okay, we'll I go back. It. Okay, we'll save you for the top five. Okay. Joe and I will go back for a top ten. <laughs> it's fine, because I want to kind of go through them sort of briefly anyway. Are we going ten to one or one to ten? Ten to one. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, will, I will comment. <laughs> yeah, go you. for it. There you go. You're, you'll be able to comment on the first one, because this is a movie that they played in, every, at, in high school. It goes along um, with another mo- movie that I'll mention later, but my number ten is Miracle. It's the only hockey movie that I really thought of that could make my list. Um, Kurt Russell is great as the USA coach. Um, I like the story that, you know, it's it's based on the true story. They didn't go with technically the best hockey players in the country. They went with the best team, which I think is always cool. Um, the speech that Kurt Russell makes in that movie, talking about how they're the greatest team in the world at the moment is one of the greatest movie quotes of all time for me as far as sports movies go. And it's just one that I've seen a bunch of times because I used to play it in high school when you had nothing to do one day. Um, so that makes my number 10. Hmm. I, you know, if I saw it, it was a long time ago. I may have seen it once. And again, this goes back to what I said earlier. It's, it's kind of hard to sit down and watch a movie that's based on one of the greatest sports moments in yeah. sports history. Mm-hmm. The actual moment for me is so much greater than the story a movie can yeah. tell. Um, I get goosebumps thinking about the, the game footage of right. them winning the game and celebrating on the ice. So yeah. And see, I think it, that's that's the difference for maybe me and Malik is that we weren't around. Yeah, you know? like it's a, it's a difference for us. It's kind of the first, for me at least, not being a hockey fan nearly as much as so many others, that that was my introduction to that whole game. So that's yeah. kind of where it falls in but yeah. that's also it is why it's number 10 on my list because you know it is a real game that meant even more in real life than for a disney movie so uh, for me being a kid I, that watched espn classic all the time i would see the clip of them like the real game mm-hmm. of them winning it like all the time it, i was interested in it so when i saw the movie it was even like it was even more special when i saw the movie yeah. because it went even more in depth on everything that happened yeah. I guess, but uh, you know, I was I was watching Pee Wee's Big Adventure last night, and there's a line near the end of the movie where he's getting ready to ride out of the drive-in, and his girlfriend says, "Why, why are you leaving? The movie's still on." He goes, "I don't need to watch it. I lived it," <laughs> and that's kind of applies to this movie. It's like I, I don't think a movie can surpass what we watched on TV as a nation. Right. I understand that, Joe. You're number ten. My number ten. Uh, we're going back to the racing genre and this might be controversial because a lot of people, I don't even know if a lot of people would put this on their top 10 list of greatest Pixar movies, let alone sports movies. But number 10 is cars wow. 2006 wow. movie. Uh, it just spoke to me. I, the, the, uh, the animation was so incredible and, and they did their research. Like when the cars are ripping around the track and you see what they call the marbles, the little bits of rubber coming off the tires, mm-hmm. bouncing on the track. 
They didn't have to put that much attention to detail, but they did. And the racing sequences were exciting. I loved the whole nostalgic thing and, and longing for a simpler time and Route 66 and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so Cars not only is one of my favorite Pixar movies, probably top five for me, um, but as far as sports goes, uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite sports I'm, movies. I'm I'm really surprised by that because yeah. I feel like outside of kids that grew up in the 2000s, mm-hmm. like I feel like we love Cars the most. I think like adults. For the most part, I've seen adults like don't like the Cars franchise that much. I think the like, franchise they, they see, as a whole, they see it as a lesser franchise than Pixar. And I've always thought the first Cars was a was great. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I think that's why. The, I think great. that's why it gets a problem is because two and three were just three not was. Very I, good. Thought, I think three was good. Two was yeah. Two was really bad. <laughs> two, was rough. two was silly. It became yeah. the spy adventure, yeah. and yeah. then three for me was three really was sad and depressing. Like it was, it was, a, it was a good movie. Yeah, but to sit there and realize that. You've reached a point in your life where you're aging out and the young whippersnappers are coming up to replace you. It was kind of a sad and depressing message. Do either of yeah. you remember the trailer for Cars 3 when it first came out? Mm-mm. No, not really. It To this day, it is one of the most shocking trailers <laughs> I've ever seen. It is literally like <laughs> it's somebody commentating Lightning, Lightning McQueen like a head in a race. And then is the rest of the trailer is like a slow motion clip of him like flipping in the air, <laughs> like as he's crashing. Oh yeah, I know. And then, and then and then the screen goes black, and it says everything changes after this, uh, and the trailer just ends, and everybody's like, "This is cars." <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean everything changes? What happens to like like it is one of the weirdest like dark, actually pretty good trailers for a Pixar movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely makes you want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I love the first one. It's one of my all-time favorite movies. It's on my top 100 all-time list. Wow. wow. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know if it I, would I top... love the praise for Cars. I, love I don't it. know if it would crack my top 10 Pixar movies. I'd have to add the, I'd have to think about Honestly, that. Honestly, I'd add it into my honorable mentions now, just because that, that just makes me happy, <laughs> just to mention a Cars. <laughs> I haven't seen it in so long. Um. Okay, so my number nine is going to be one that, for me, Growing up playing basketball feels very relatable. Um, and it's not for the title. White men can't jump. <laughs> Luckily, I was gifted to be able to jump a little bit. Uh, nothing crazy, but I could jump. Uh, my brother and my dad got more of the jumping power. Um, but it portrays what I've experienced a lot in playing. You know, when they first start hustling. And you you got Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson, which great duo, by the way. Yeah. Um, and when they start the hustle and Wesley Snipes says, you get to pick my opponent and they all go for the white guy. <laughs> and it's like, I grew up in basketball, like that being a thing, um, where a lot of the times, because you're the white kid that you're, you're underestimated, not be, you're not yeah. going to be as good, which is interesting because that's opposite of what, you know, most of world views end up being. And that's why we have so many divides. But that's why I feel like the the thing for a basketball player is I see it almost differently because I grew up being kind of the odd man out in a way. Um, and it's just a really interesting spin on things. And I love just like the comedy of it and just it's just a very raw but fictional movie, I guess. Um, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, that's why it's my number nine. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It didn't crack my top ten. Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was funny. Um, but in an attempt to be the cool uncle, I, uh, I was in, uh, I was at Venice beach. I, I visited Venice beach multiple times, but I went to Venice beach, took some pictures of the basketball court there, uh, sent them to my nephew. Who's now in his twenties. And I'm like, guess what they filmed here? And he's like, I don't know what he said, <laughs> white men can't jump. And he, and he was like, that's my all time <laughs> favorite movie. Wow. So I got some cool uncle points for nice. that. Uh, so I, I enjoy the movie. I think it's funny. It just didn't crack my top ten. Yeah. Joe, you're number nine. Uh, we touched on a little bit. I got Talladega Nights uh, at number nine. Uh, came out in 2006. I love comedies. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I own over 600 movies on DVD. That doesn't even include TV shows. And um, most of them are comedies. Like a large majority of the movies like, I own are comedies. Well over half? Uh Probably close to half, okay. not a, not more than half, but close to half. And I love comedies. I love going to a theater and laughing and love my uh, Will Ferrell 
And I thought this, this movie was so refreshing and just different and mm-hmm. to take that whole NASCAR thing, which is huge. I mean, NASCAR is yeah. huge. And to get NASCAR's involvement and everything. Mm-hmm. And I just love it. I, I absolutely love Talladega Nights. Yeah. The quotable moments in that movie are yeah. second to none. <laughs> I, uh, I They always seem to come up like, you know, for Christmas – I'll, uh, my, my sister will get me like Batman socks or something and I'll, I'll turn to her and go, I'm a grown man, which is referencing the old man when they're praying to little baby Jesus yeah. and the old man's going, he was a grown man. <laughs> yeah. like, you pray to your Jesus. I'll praise my little baby Jesus. And so, yeah, those quotes come up all the yeah. time. My personal favorite from that movie is don't put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, use, I use that in so many just everyday things. Like, don't put that evil on me. I love that. I, I always like, I'd like you to meet my son's Walker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just great. I have a whole set of diecast cars from that movie at mm, home, and they're wow. quite valuable. Yeah. And it includes the Wonder Bread car, uh, the malt liquor car or whatever uh there's a me car mm. remember when he put me because yeah. he didn't want to sponsor there's a perrier car and then of course i added uh the chevy malibu that reese bobby drove mm-hmm. uh, that had the cougar in it yeah so, yeah that's how much i love this movie nice okay my number eight and i'm gonna try to play a clip and it goes into the will Fer- will ferrell sports movie bucket that you know this one people don't really watch too often Attitude. You can't talk about hurting other players. You don't think? You don't you don't think? But I don't think you should be butting in when I'm talking to my team. You're my assistant, okay? You're supposed to back me up and go get me juice boxes when I tell you. Now go get me a juice box. You know who you're talking to? I'm talking <laughs> to the juice box guy. You're crazy. Well, I'm not crazy. I'm just thirsty. Why don't you go to hell? <laughs> no, you go to hell. Why you're there? Why don't you grab me a juice box? <laughs> So, so my number eight is a cult classic in the Tysic household. Me, my brother, and my dad, at least once a year, sit down and watch Kicking and Screaming. Wow. It's one that I don't hear people talk about very often. True. And it's probably the Will Ferrell movie I've seen the least. But I, it, I've seen it like once or twice, and I knew it was good when I watched it. It goes under the radar. You got Mike Ditka and Will Ferrell going at it. They're basically, in the entire movie, those two are fantastic. And then... The kids that they cast in that movie are really funny as well, for the most part. Um, it's another one of those kind of stupid, silly kids movies, but it's fantastic, and it's hilarious. Uh, you know, for me, I think it was like one and done. Like, I may have watched it one time and, and then never saw it again, so it doesn't. it's not really on my radar. The movie I, was, I thought you were leading up to, and I was hoping you were leading up to, was Semi-Pro. <laughs> that's, what, <laughs> that's what I thought at first. Cinema this, Pro, I love Cinema This Pro. may Cinema. tick you guys off, but I don't have a single basketball movie on my entire list. It's, okay. it's, it's personal old. favorites. It's, but it's when you list. got me, when you yeah. started talking about uh, Will Ferrell, I was like, oh, Semi Pro. <laughs> and then you went that route. And I'm yeah. like, I I love Semi Pro. Yeah, yeah. Semi Pro is another good one. Will Ferrell has some like underrated sports movies, if you think about it. It's pretty funny. I love the moment. I'm kind of hijacking your movie, but That's I love okay. the moment when they do the alley oop and the referee doesn't know how to call it. And he's like, "Foul!" Technical foul. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, kicking and screaming. I think you should watch it again if you haven't seen it. It again, it's got really good quotes. And then like, there's this, there's the scene where he decides to get gifts for all the kids, and they get them canaries or whatever, <laughs> and they bring them in these. Uh, um, little cages and stuff, and all the parents are like, "What are we supposed to do with these?" <laughs> and it's just, it's great. I you know what it. that juice box quote reminds me of, and I, I have to imagine this was intentional, but it reminds me of the scene in Goodfellas mm. when uh, the one guy tells Joe Pesci's character to go get your shine box. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it had the same energy. Yeah, and the the other best part about it too is like, there's a scene where Will Ferrell is in Mike Ditka's house, and Mike Ditka's wife doesn't want him smoking. He she wants him to quit, but he's smoking in like their guest room or whatever, their living room. And so he keeps handing it to Will Ferrell and he's like, "Smoking's a nasty habit. I told you so many times." And Will Ferrell just sits there like, "Yeah, sorry, it's a nasty habit." And it's just it's great. Um awesome. 
Joe, what's your number eight? Number eight, we're going to keep the, uh, gosh, the last three movies I talked about were car racing movies. Uh, number <laughs> eight for me is Days of Thunder, 1990. Uh, prior to that, there weren't any NASCAR movies that I'm aware of. Maybe, mm-hmm. well, I think Richard Pryor did a NASCAR movie about the early days of NASCAR. But uh, Days of Thunder, what, what's so crazy about Days of Thunder, they got NASCAR's, uh, you know, a sign of approval, seal of approval on this movie. And then when you watch the movie, it doesn't look so much like they're racing as they're having a demolition derby. Like Tom Cruise's character is constantly just smashing into (laughs) other cars and stuff. And initially people were critiquing the movie, criticizing it, saying that's not how we race in NASCAR. Well, guess what? That's what NASCAR has become. Mm. And every NASCAR race has six, seven, eight major crashes Mm. in them now. And I think it's funny that, People complained about that when Days of Thunder came out. Now it, it it's seems too norm. dramatic at the time. Yeah, yeah, now it seems tame, like they toned it down. And but. I think they swept that kind of under the rug. There's always been feuds and stuff in NASCAR. Like yeah. Dale Earnhardt is known as the Intimidator. Now I know he never really crashed anybody per se, but he definitely pushed people's buttons. And when you're driving around for four hours in sometimes almost close to 150 degree temperatures in your car. People are going to get a little upset. Yeah, and and Tom Cruise was at his absolute peak during this era. And somehow, I don't know how Tom Cruise continually pulled this off, but he made arrogance and cockiness cool. Like, (laughs) you, like, admired him, even though he wasn't a good person on the screen, but... You admired him, and you wanted to be like him. But he was kind of known for playing those characters. Like, yeah. Was in Top Gun, he's the cockiest, yeah, like know-it-all character. <laughs> but you love you love him at the same time. That was his thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, my number seven is a basketball movie. No surprise. Um, and I'm going with Hoosiers. It's one Classic. that a lot of people would probably put higher. It's a lot of people's favorite basketball movie of all time. I think some people have also come to think it's super overrated. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people say it's the most overrated basketball movie. Yeah. So. And I, I've kind of come on board with that. Um, I know it's like one of my dad's favorites, but for me, it's just, it doesn't have that oomph to it a little bit. There's some good quote movement, uh, but I, I think like the star of the show is Gene Hackman yeah. as the coach. Um, I like the way that they assembled a team in Indiana um, but it's just not as compelling to me. And maybe it's just because it's an older movie, but for me, that's why it, it falls on to number seven. Cause it's a great basketball movie. It's just not as good as some of the others to me. I got nothing. I don't even know if I've <laughs> seen it. I told you I have no basketball <laughs> movies on my list. So, uh, I'm, su- I'm surprised Hoosiers is one you haven't seen. Yeah, I, I'll have. We to can add we can recommend to you to watch a movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you should. It's it is it's a good sports movie. I'm not not it. as great as some people say yeah. it is, but it's it's really good. Mm-hmm. Considering I, you know, I'm a movie guy. I'm always embarrassed. When I'm like, I haven't seen it. Yeah, I, I should at <laughs> least have made an effort to sit down and watch it. So I will. I'll add it to my uh, must see movie list. Okay. Can I, can I add? I I I think I have a six and seven that I could add to the list. Go for it. So, my number seven. I don't know how I just thought of it. Like, I didn't even put it on my honorable mentions. But it's probably a football movie that I've seen more than any in my life. Rudy. Okay. A, a movie That's people a also. a lot of top ten yeah, lists. A movie that uh, people also, it kind of goes in the Hooters cat- category of some people think it's underrated. Some people think it's extremely overrated. Mm-hmm. Sean Astin. <laughs> it was kind of like his first big role after, like, being a kid actor. And it is extremely over dramatized, yeah. like like compared to what the real story is. Mm-hmm. But watching him go from like a kid at Holy Cross that grew up just he wanted nothing more than to be a Notre Dame football player. He transfers to Notre Dame, luckily gets in, works his butt off over and over, just gets crushed. He's nothing more than like five seven, <laughs> like a hundred nothing pounds, mm-hmm. just getting pummeled in practice. Players come to respect him. The coaches don't really respect him, but the players come to love him. They all this this is a part that it never happened. They all come into the coach's office and lay their jerseys down and say, "We won't play unless Rudy plays." <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I just I love <laughs> cheesy stuff like that in sports movies, and he ends up playing, makes a game winning sack, and they raise him up and 
<laughs> Rudy's the hero of the story. Now they're building the statue. Now, in real life, he did make a play in the game. But he didn't make the game winning <laughs> sack. To, he wasn't the, yeah. su- the big hero. Mm-hmm. But he, he was a major underdog that uh, most guys would never get to play high level college football like he was able to. And he actually made a play in a for a big program. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I loved Rudy as a kid, and it's a movie I've seen so many times. You know, a friend of mine uh, told the story of he interviewed Sean Astin at one of the Comic Cons, and he said, of all the different movies you've worked on, which one has the most rabid, fanatic fans? Yeah. <laughs> was it Lord of the Rings? Was it Goonies? And he said, hands down, Rudy. He said, <laughs> those Rudy fans yeah. are fanatics. It, it became the ultimate, like, underdog, like, you shouldn't exactly. be here type of sports story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my number seven is a baseball movie, and you guys are going to laugh because you're going to think I'm being self-serving here, but it's uh, an HBO movie called 61. <laughs> I, would I, I don't blame eventually. you. I don't blame you. came out in 2001. Now, yes, I was an extra on the film <laughs> for two weeks, and it was one of the most incredible moments of my life, but it easily could have been a terrible movie, and it was not. And the first time I got to see it was at a big premiere that they held in uh, at the Fox Theater um, because they filmed the whole thing at Tiger Stadium. And I went in there and was very pleasantly surprised that it was a compelling story. And, and what I liked about it is it wasn't hoisting someone up on their shoulders mm-hmm. at the end of, you know, kicking the game-winning field goal or hitting the game-winning home run. It was it was this compelling story about two guys playing for the same team, and the fans loved one guy and hated the other guy, despite the fact that he was a Yankee. And and when he would go out and do well, the fans would boo him. And it, <laughs> you sit there going, how is this possible? Mm-hmm. And that made the story very, very compelling. And um, he he's like, I don't know what's going on here. And so... If you haven't seen 61, I think it's one of the best baseball movies ever made uh, up there with League of the or, – or not League of the Run, even though I was going to talk about that later, but up there with The Natural and uh, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Uh, Field of uh, Dreams. Yeah, yeah, that sort of stuff. I, I think 61 is in that conversation. Mm-hmm. So I didn't – wasn't Billy Crystal – like a, ma- a main producer on that. He movie. was the director. And He's the director. I, yeah. I, I've I heard like maintaining like the accuracy of everything. Yeah, was like a major part for him because he was such a big fan of was was he a Mets fan or a Yankees? Fan? Yankees guy. Yeah, oh, he's, hands okay, he's a down. big Yankees guy. And he, the, he wanted yeah. to like do real justice to their story. Yeah, and the shocking part was I remember the first day where I arrived at Tiger Stadium to get fitted for wardrobe. And they had converted Tiger Stadium into Yankee Stadium because Yankee Stadium had undergone major renovations where it didn't look like it did back in the 60s. And Tiger Stadium still had that look and feel, but they painted the seats and covered them with fabric so everything had that Yankee greenish hue to it. And it was shocking. Mm -hmm. Uh, Luckily, it was just latex paint and everything. They hosed it all off and removed it and actually filmed scenes at Tiger Stadium. Uh, later in the the two weeks that we were there, um, so yeah, it's very very accurate, well cast. The actors who played Mantle and Maris look the part. It was Barry Pepper was was uh, uh, was uh, Maris, and Thomas Jane was Mickey Mantle, and uh, they nailed it. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, it's very authentic too, and it's it's just a great story. Yeah, uh, my number six. I won't go on too long about it because Malik kind of mentioned it. It's another movie that I feel like I watched at least once a year in school, and that's Remember the Titans for me. Um, it's my wife's favorite, one of her favorite movies of all time, um, so it would definitely be her number one sports movie. Um, but it's number six on my list. Um, I think the story is great. You know, it's kind of the bringing segregation, you know, bringing two different uh, colors together um, that kind of genre there's a genre of sports movies that kind of do that kind of thing um but this one is loosely based off of a true story now i know that i've heard like since the movie came out that there's a lot of stuff that they don't touch on yeah um, there, there's some stuff with um is his name gary gary bertier the, yeah. the linebacker yeah the one his, that his gets sto- hurt in the movie yeah i think his story is like kind of even more sad than they yeah. made it seem there's 
There's some stuff they like. Yeah, and then there's some things with the coaches that they weren't as nice guys as they were uh, shown in the movie. Also, the other thing that I know in the movie is that the when they win the state championship, they win it like on a what is it, a, like a walk off touchdown yeah. or something. In real life, they blew the team out. Mm. It was like twenty seven nothing or something <laughs> like that. Um, so it wasn't as dramatic as it was. Um, but the the storyline is a good movie. Um, it's enjoyable and. Uh, it's just one of those feel good sports movies. Malik, you said you had a number six? Yes. Thank so God. I had a hard time choosing which movie from the Rocky universe I would put on this list. <laughs> and it came down between this one and Rocky Three, which is my favorite actual Rocky movie. The movie with Clubber Lang, Mr. T. Oh yeah. Where Rocky has to go and train with Apollo Creed and has to figure out how to like reestablish himself as a as a fighter. Uh, that's my favorite Rocky movie, but in terms of the overall Rocky universe, I feel like this movie took what Rocky did and perfected it, mm-hmm. and it is probably the most recent movie. I feel like the best sports movie of the of, of recent times, Creed, the first Creed movie, mm. came out in 2015, uh, directed by Ryan Coogler. Him and Michael B. Jordan have come together on several projects. This was the one that got both of them over the hump as superstar director and actor. I mean, the the way they were able to pull off a story that just seems really far-fetched and not that interesting when you first think about it. Like, oh, Apollo Creed has a son that people don't know about. He's going to become a boxer. Like, uh, it is what it is. But having him intertwine with Rocky and just every part of it, from the, the training montages – having a new twist on the training montage to him, to Adonis Creed finding his love the way Rocky found his and Adrian in the Rocky franchise. And just the, the character of Adonis Creed finding himself mm-hmm. and be being more than just Apollo Creed's son that people didn't know about. It, it's a, it's a great movie. Mm-hmm. And the, the final fight, the final fight like had my heart racing the first time I saw the movie and I, I just love the movie Creed. Mm-hmm. So that would be my number six. Yeah. Yeah. I was pleasantly surprised with Creed yeah. because uh, it could have easily have just been like a money grab or whatever, uh, but it had heart. There's a lot of ways it could have gone wrong. And, and, you know, to, for Rocky to take him under his wing and then, you know, they reveal that, you know, Rocky's dealing with an illness. And I love those just little moments where he's like at his restaurant going from table to table, because that's what a lot of these aging athletes yeah. would do is, buy a restaurant, you mm-hmm. know, to have a source of income. And then they would go from table to table and go, Hey, everyone doing okay over here. And they're like, wow, that's Rocky, you know? And I love those quiet little moments. And, uh, I really enjoyed Creed. Now, apparently I didn't enjoy it as, as much as I should have, because I never got around to seeing two and three. And I don't know why mm-hmm. I never saw the sequels but I really did enjoy the first one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I, I have one little negative about Creed. I think it would have been even better. And this might be controversial. I think Rocky should have died. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it should have ended with Adonis Creed having to go it like on his own, the way it started having Rocky, like help him get all the way there. Yeah. Rocky passing from his illness and then him having to take all of it and do it on his own. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I feel like it would have been almost perfect mm-hmm. if that happened, yeah. but still a great movie. Yeah. I think Sly just wanted to leave that door open to come back, yeah. but mm-hmm. yeah, I agree with you. That would have been, that would have given it a really emotional weight. Joe, your number six, number six. We're going to go with another baseball movie. I mentioned it briefly a second ago, Uh league of their own 1992 Tom Hanks at his best. Um, Great movie, just a different twist on the baseball movie. But the the actor, the character that stole the movie was John Lovitz. Mm. Oh. He was absolutely hysterical <laughs> his, his, his quotes, in it. He's in it for like 10 minutes. <laughs> I know. And maybe 10 minutes. And every quote he has is incredible. When movie. he's up in the press box, you know, making comments and stuff. And he, he just stole the movie. Like, how, how does a, a character actor with a small role go in there and steal a movie that stars Tom Hanks and Gina Davis and but man was he great in that and yeah. uh like I said you know I like my sports movies that have something new to offer just a different twist on things and you know here's a group of women 
trying to entertain baseball fans while the the men folk are overseas fighting in the war, mm-hmm. and then you know they have that all taken away from them when the war ends or whatever. But uh, yeah, I I love it because it's just a a, a twist on the the sports theme mm-hmm. and uh, laugh out loud funny, and everybody was just great in it. Yeah. And it started Tom Hank, probably the greatest run by a single actor maybe ever. Yeah, Tom Hanks from that movie through like 1997, yeah. he just didn't miss. Just classic yeah. after classic. Yeah, yeah. Um, my number five is the only uh, fighting movie that is in my list, uh, and that movie is Warrior. It's an MMA movie, and it's kind of another one that's a little under the radar. It's got Tom Hardy and uh, Joel Edgerton. Uh, they're two estranged brothers. One is an ex Marine. Um, Joel Edgerton plays like a science teacher or something, maybe the math teacher, I don't know. Um, and they end up being in the same MMA tournament, um, and there's just a lot of drama to it, and it's it's really good. And it's not like, there's a lot of cheesy fighting movies, especially like the MMA style um, stuff, but this one just really feels a little more down to earth. Tom Hardy is fantastic in the movie. Um, it's one that if you guys have not seen, I recommend it um, because it's it's very good. It is probably it goes through a lot of hardships. It's probably one of like the top three most underrated sports movies. Ever. Yeah, it's that not, good. Not too many people have seen it. The yeah, War of Warrior is the yeah, under the radar excellent. Yeah, I'll have to add it to my list. I have not seen it. Joe, your number five. My number five, another baseball movie uh, that really spoke to me as a young young person, uh, nineteen seventy six. The Bad News Bears, oh, the original, classic. not the remake. The remake was completely unnecessary. If you want to <laughs> see that movie, go watch the original with Walter Matthau, Tatum O'Neill. Uh, it was so real to me. I was 10 years old when this movie came out, and I felt like I knew these kids. Those <laughs> kids depicted on the screen were so real. They weren't like these stage kids where their moms are in the wings going, go out there. They felt so real, and um, and again, you know, the 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 cliche was just upended at the end of the movie. Spoiler alert: when they don't necessarily win at all, mm-hmm. but they have their moment where the, the one kid goes, "You could take your trophy and stick it where the sun don't shine," and yeah, and then that music da 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 da, and it's it, I got goosebumps. <laughs> um, go back and watch the original Bad News Bears. Uh, so authentic, so real, amazing performances by the kids, and especially Walter Matthau, uh, one of my top five favorite sports movies of all time. Yeah. Malik, your number five? My number five is one of my favorite football movies ever, a movie that I don't think it's talked about enough. And I, I, I don't know. It, it has a classic speech. It has a lot of the things that people like look for in sports movies. Mm-hmm. Great acting, classic speech, great direction. A little, maybe a little longer than it should be, but I don't know. Any given Sunday, I I, I love this movie. It's, I've heard good things about it, and I've never seen it. Yeah, it's it's one you should put on your list. It's an Oliver Stone movie. It's uh, because the the big deal is Al Pacino, right? Al Pacino's yeah. the head coach of the team. Uh, Jamie Fox plays Willie Beeman, young upstart quarterback. I have a Willie Beeman jersey. <laughs> That's how much I love this movie. I actually got the jersey of the character. But the overall cast is just amazing for the time. Like Cameron Diaz, Dennis Quaid, James Woods. And then you got Lawrence Taylor in it. You mm. got a young Terrell Owens in it. Like it, it's it's a really big cast of characters and different athletes and actors. Yeah. And it goes into so many different parts of like what makes professional football what it is for athletes. Like mm-hmm. you, Jamie Foxx is the young up-and-coming quarterback who he's like a Michael Vick type who people like don't really believe in yet and has to prove his worth. Dennis Quaid plays like the older uh, quarterback that's kind of out on his way out. He knows he ha- might have to retire soon. So he's like contemplating what his career is going to be. Al Pacino is also kind of over the hill as a coach. And it, it, it just goes, it goes through the ups and downs of like what athletes go through, through a football season mm-hmm. in the pros and I I just I love every part of it, like from the personalities of the players to the 
it, it, you don't have to pull it up on YouTube, yeah. but the big speech from Al Pacino. Yeah, that's one that is, I yeah, thought about. Basically, pulling. like the summary is like him saying, like basically an inch is like the difference between winning and losing in yeah. life and in a football game. Mm-hmm. It's like a five minute speech, but that's like the summary yeah. of the speech. Mm-hmm. And I I don't know. It's it's a violent movie in, <laughs> when it comes to football. It has some really violent scenes. Yeah, when it comes to the football stuff. But it it's a it's a real movie. It, it gets really raw nice. with a lot of aspects of pro football, and I I love that movie. Nice. Any given Sunday. I like that you mentioned Dennis Quaid because that rolls right into my next movie. <laughs> he had the clip ready to go. <laughs> I don't know. Love so this, so that music is just played throughout the movie The Rookie. And it's oh, all I ever I think about when I so when I watch that movie. That's your clip to that music. <laughs> yes, That's just background hilarious. music. Because they play that that music basically at, at every early transition in the movie. So basically, the story is that Dennis Quaid is Jim Morris, who was a you know former player that had made it all the way to I think single A baseball, and then had too many arm surgeries. So then he became a high school teacher, ended up being the high school coach, and then. One day he messes around with his kids and um, they're throwing and he throws to his catcher and they're like, man, you throw really hard coach. He's like, well, you know, I was a former player. And so he thinks that, you know, he's throwing like 70 or something and go to find out he's throwing like 90 something. And then he goes, he ends up going to a tryout and stuff and he makes it back into the uh, MLB as a 35 year old and i like that it's a true story um dennis quaid is great um what's his name angus t jones plays his son um and then uh brian cox plays his father who actually does a really good job because him and his father don't get along he always thought baseball was silly to try to make a career out of it um and it's just it's a really good it's a very disney movie um but i like that it's based on a real story one part of that movie that doesn't matter very much, but I love that era of Tampa Bay Rays uniforms. Yes, the Devil <laughs> Rays. I, I love those uniforms that yeah. they wore back then. Mm-hmm. Just, when I'm they were the Devil that. Rays. Yeah. I got to add to that. So I used to have an office on the campus of uh, of uh, Oakland University, and they had a speaker coming on campus, and they asked me to record them. So I set up a couple of cameras, and it was the real-life rookie mm. of wow. this story. And so I saw the movie after I heard him tell his story from memory. Yeah. And it was absolutely riveting. And Mm -hmm. you, you kind of skip some of the highlights and and I don't know if I can't remember if this was covered in the movie or not, but basically his team made a bet with him and said, if we win the championship, yes, you got to try out. And he agreed because he didn't think they had a prayer. Yeah. And that's kind of like the first half of the movie. Yeah, and so they win the championship. So he goes to try out. He's pushing a baby stroller, mm-hmm. and they're asking him, is your son trying out? And he's like, no, I am. And I love the moment where he says he throws a – without even warming up, mm-hmm. he throws a pitch, and he sees a guy with a radar gun behind home plate. He's looking at it, and he's banging the radar gun, mm-hmm. and he's like, oh, geez, I didn't even register on the radar gun. Yeah. So he throws a couple more pitches. He says, all right, I held up my end of the bargain. And as he's leaving, a scout chases him down and says, I will get fired Mm -hmm. if I don't get your contact information. And he's like, why? What happened? And he said, you were throwing in the 90s. Yeah. And yeah, I think the scene too, he, the guy comes up to him and he asks, how fast do you think you were throwing? And he's like, (laughs) I don't know, 75, you know, it's something he's like you were throwing like 95 yeah he kind of like freaks out um the other disney moment in that movie is he goes up to a, a speed trap on the side of the road in his town and you know he's curious so he throws and he throws at it and it reads i can't remember if it was like 70 or something miles per hour and then he gets back in his truck because he's disappointed he only threw 70 and then all of a sudden it like corrects itself and it says like 90 <laughs> or something like that. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of good feel good moments. It follows him from his youth up through his coaching. And then the, the back half of the movie is him making his MLB journey. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah. It's just a great story. And he, he told about, you know, when he was young, he was cocky. He was arrogant. He thought he was going to have a huge impact on major league baseball. And then he like got the injury and yeah. thought he was done. He thought he was 
just over and then mm-hmm. just a, a nice comeback story. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to Malik for your number four. Uh, my number four is a boxing movie that I think is it. It I, I've never heard anybody really talk about it. Okay. And it is one of the best sports movies I've seen. And I used to watch it all the time when I was a kid. It used to come on Showtime like every other day. And I would be like, I've, I've never seen this movie. It's based on a true story. How come I've never heard of this? And it's it's such a good movie. Cinderella Man. Yep. That was, uh, it was on my written list. It didn't actually make my top 10. But yes, great yeah, movie. It, it stars Russell Crowe as James J. Braddock, mm-hmm. a fighter during the Great Depression. Uh, his wife is played by Renee, Renee Zellweger. The trainer, his trainer, uh, Joe Gold, is played by Paul Giamatti. Uh, it's about a fired fighter, James Braddock, who is kind of like he's getting older and he's kind of washed up. Yeah, he has a broken hand. People think his career is like coming to an end. It's at the height of the Great Depression, so he's having a hard time um, providing for his family. Like they're think things are just tough. They're they're close to losing their house. He has to move his kids to, like, his sisters or one of their uh, relatives. There's a point where they lose their electricity because they can't pay for it. Yeah. Um, like, they, things really are, just, like, starting to get dire. And his hand is, like, slowly healing as this is going on. Like, over a month or two, he has to work on the docks near where he lives to, like, make money to scrap and get food and try to keep the lights on. And as his hand is healing... He's, he's starting to realize, like, I, I have to try to fight again. And he's starting to gain motivation. He's starting to work again. His trainer gets him one fight. He wins that one fight. He moves on. He wins another one. People are kind of thinking, like, it's a fluke because this guy, he's, he's, he's old and washed up. He's, nobody, he's on nobody's radar. And he continues to win fights. He wins two or three more fights. And then he gets a shot at the title against Mac, Max Bayer who's the boogeyman of that time during the Great Depression. He was known in real life he killed somebody Mm -hmm. during a fight. So everybody's telling him, like, this is something. You don't need to do this. You've made enough money. You have nothing to prove to anybody. This man has killed someone. If you go on with this fight, you can, but we're telling you not to do it. And for for his family to to prove it to himself that he he can still do it, he goes on and, and fights the fight, and he ends up winning. Oh, wow. He ends up beating Max Bayer. He wins the title, and it's it's a it's it, it could be cheesy when you think about it, but it's based on a true story. Wow! Of he he beat all the odds of one of the toughest times in American history, mm. and just scrapped and built himself back up and became a champion, mm-hmm. and beat one of the best fighters of his time. Yeah, it's a yeah, great movie. Another uh, underrated boxing movie that I will mention too, because it it was in my written list. Is Million Dollar Baby. That's another one that's a really good one. Yeah, number, That wasn't on my radar. I just had no interest in seeing that one. Yeah. Uh, what's your number four, Joe? Number four, I'm going to go with uh, my one and only hockey movie on here, uh, Slapshot, <laughs> 1977. One I have to see. I know it's a classic. I have Paul to see Newman <laughs> at his best. A great story of just underdogs and misfits and the Hanson brothers who became iconic. Uh, And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, in my opinion, the greatest hockey movie ever made and one of the top five uh, sports movies ever made. Laugh Out Loud Funny. Um, Melinda Dillon, who we most know as the mom in A Christmas Story, (laughs) is uh, the love interest, Paul Newman's love interest in this movie. And, uh if you haven't seen it, you got to see it. It's it's a great comedy, great sports movie. Yeah. Um my number 3 uh it's my one nostalgia movie. It's already been mentioned. It has to be mentioned again. Ever <laughs> this movie ranked high is incredible. I couldn't do it. It's pure nostalgia. <laughs> yeah. I know it's not a great movie overall, but I I have to I, watch I love it. it. I watch it like all the time. If it's on, I'm, che- I'm jumping least, in. At least yeah. once a year. This is a movie where purely the soundtrack does so much for this movie. Um, <laughs> it is. It is. If that movie didn't come out when it came out, yeah, it doesn't work at all. No, it doesn't. It had to come out in like 1995. Yeah. And for me, it's like culmination of childhood. It's basketball. It's Looney Tunes. Like it's it's great. 
it's so dumb funny at times too. Like Bill Murray is fantastic He's, in yeah, that movie. Yeah. Um, Michael Jordan, not a terrible actor as far as you know sports athletes go. Um, I like that they brought in so many other athletes, Charles Barkley, and even sh- guys like Sean Bradley. Muggsy uh, Bogues. <laughs> I love their Monstars counterparts are yeah. similar to the actual players in a way. Never watched the new one. I don't care. I'm not doing it. I won't do it. <laughs> Refuse. <laughs> yeah. um, Refuse. And just, yeah, the the characters are great. The it's It's got that very old school Looney Tunes vibe to it too, which makes it enjoyable. And it's one that I always go back to, not just for the soundtrack, but just for some of the moments to relive. Definitely a nostalgia pick. Yeah. yeah. Um, Joe, your number three. My number three, I'm going to go with The Longest Yard, not the 2005 Adam I love Sandler the 2005 remake. remake. <laughs> no, I I'm love the remake. going with the 1974 yeah, original Burt with Burt Reynolds. Again, it's it's gritty, it's dark at times, but it's laugh out loud funny. Mm-hmm. And uh, Burt Reynolds at his peak, um, it has its ups and downs and highs and lows and uh just so great just trying to you know him going around trying to recruit all these really vicious uh prisoners to get a chance to take their anger out on the guards Mm -hmm. and uh oh just so good uh absolute classic one of several movies on my list um made before you guys were born um but yeah if you haven't seen the original longest yard uh check it out um the remake is kind of a pet peeve of mine uh and this is an issue i have with sports movies in general that whoever the the actor is that stars in these movies has to be convincing in that role and sometimes they don't always nail it and a lot of people have had a hard time accepting adam sandler as a former nfl quarterback yeah he uh, he just doesn't seem to fit that right role and there was another movie uh what was it the bruce willis movie uh where they played uh football and Um, damon wayans was like the quarterback and then yeah i know i know i just don't see that um yeah and so to to make a a sports movie work you got to cast appropriately and make sure these actors have the chops to pull it off Mm -hmm. and and unfortunately you know, the remake was was funny, but it just doesn't hold the candle. The original, Burt Reynolds was an athlete. He was a quarterback, yeah. I think, at the University of Miami or something like that. Uh, so he, there's no question that he was able to pull off that role. So. Yeah, I, I feel like the remake they tried to lean more towards the comedy more than the original. For exactly. Sure. Malik, your number three. My number three is it's a movie that I don't think we'll ever be able to pull like be able to be pulled off again and it kind of makes me miss like what movies used to be (laughs) in the type of movies that kind of used to be blockbusters that aren't anymore jerry Maguire. Hmm. it is a romantic dramedy (laughs) sports movie yeah and it works in every single bit of it and i don't know how it does it but like the roman like the standout quote of the movie is like you complete me and you had me at hello. Or show me the money. And, and then the sports aspect of show me the money, like there are so many moving parts in the movie yeah. from Tom Cruise being like a big, ups, big uh, famous agent that gets fired from his uh, agency, Cuba Gooding Jr. being his one high-level client, athlete yeah. client. I, 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 don't, I don't know how the movie does it. It's one yeah. of those movies from the 90s that makes me wish – it makes me miss what movies used to be yeah. because putting all those elements together to me should never work. And every bit of the movie, it just works. Yeah. It was For, a phenomenon yeah. when it like, came out. It, it was, was huge. Cuba Gooding Jr. The peak of his career before he started making weird decisions <laughs> <laughs> in movies. Tom Cruise at the peak of his powers. Renee Zellweger on the come up. Uh, young Regina King mm. as Cuba Gooding Jr.'s wife. Like the cast is good. And, the, the story is great. Jonathan Lipnicki, one of the cutest kids in movie history in a sports movie. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Sorry. yeah, it's, it's a, it's a movie that's, I, I love so much from the sports aspect to the agent, to the, all of it. 
it, it's an underrated sports movie, but it brings in all those elements together, and it just works. And it shows a different side of sports, I'll give you that. Yeah. Um, it's funny, though, you mentioned Cuba Gooding Jr. Radio almost made my top ten, but it's kind of – Died it's controversial. Off. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. It is a part of what made his career kind of fall off. But uh, as a kid, that would have been up there for me. Um, my number two, again, Malik already mentioned it earlier, is Glory Road. It is another Disney movie. Um, but for me, I just – I don't know if this is where I started to enjoy the, the team that always wins losing. <laughs> but seeing Texas Western take off – Kentucky, who was yeah. a powerhouse way back when, um, is enjoyable. I like, again, that it has – it's loosely rooted on the true story. Um, Texas Western being the first team to have five black athletes to start on their team. I like the way that the coach brought the, the players in. It was almost a similar vibe to Hoosiers about these guys that, you know, nobody else was recruiting, but – he felt they were perfect for his team and what he wanted as part of his team and that they were being overlooked um, because of their color. And it's just a feel another feel-good movie, but I enjoy it what for what it is. Um, Joe, you're number two? Number two, I'm going to go with what I feel is the greatest comedy ever made, oh. and that is <laughs> Caddyshack. Well, that's not really a hot take. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are a lot of people that think Caddyshack is the One of the game. most quoted movies of all time. I mean, you can't go golfing without rattling off a bunch of lines from that movie. One of the greatest casts ever assembled for a movie. And uh, it all revolves around golf. And you got Rodney Dangerfield doing his thing. And uh, Chevy Chase when he was charming and handsome and yeah. suave back in the day. And, of course, Bill Murray just stealing the whole thing with uh, the groundskeeper. Um, so, yeah, the whole thing revolves around golf, which qualifies it as a sports <laughs> movie. But, in my opinion, the greatest comedy of all time. Hmm. So, how disappointed were you when you saw uh, Caddyshack 2? I saw it once, like, on cable. <laughs> I didn't even see it in the theater. One of the and worst just, sequels. And you got, I think Dan time. Aykroyd came on and tried to yeah, Chevy fill Chase in. Wouldn't, Chevy Chase wouldn't do the sequel. Uh, well, I think Dan Aykroyd tried to do the Bill Murray thing with the groundskeeper, you know, kind of acting goofy, and it just didn't work. It was, it, it, it just was a disaster. So I, I've been going to therapy to try to forget that movie, so <laughs> thanks for bringing it up. I, I had to bring it up just because of how infamous it is. <laughs> Malik, you're number two. Uh, my number two is my final two movies are baseball movies. Okay. And this number two is one that every time I, I have it saved on my YouTube because it's free on YouTube. And every now and then, I'll just come back to it when I have nothing to watch because I love all the characters. I love the comedy. I love the story. I love the fact that it's something you can't do in today's game where you can take on the identity of an actual real team mm -hmm. and, like, put thousands of fans in a stadium and film scenes like it's a real baseball. Yeah. Major League. Mm. At every single the, – the characters – are the major standout from Charlie Sheen as Ricky Wild Thing Vaughn, uh, Wesley Snipes as Willie Mays Hayes, Dennis Haber as uh, Pedro uh, Serrano, Tom Berger as Jake Taylor. Like, you can just go down the line of all the memorable characters. Of course, Bob uh, Bob Euchre. Yes, that's yeah, just, just a bit, a bit outside. outside. <laughs> it, like, it, there are so many quotables that you will never forget after after you're done with the movie. And it, it, it's just such a classic. Mm -hmm. It's a feel-good movie. It's hilarious. I, I just love Major League so much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, my number one. I think it's also my number one quote of all time is in this movie. Um, it's obviously a basketball movie, but I have to play the quote because it gets me almost every time. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. <laughs> Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same as we are liberated from our own fear. 
our presence automatically liberates others. Sir, I just want to say thank you. Oh, Timo Cruz gets me every time. I am honestly very surprised that this is your number one. I know. It, it's got, I love this movie. It's got its qualms to it, uh, but my number one is Coach Carter. Um, Samuel L. Jackson being the cranky coach that wants people to work hard, make you do push-ups when you don't Is do he cranky, though? <laughs> well, no. He's got his reasons. Let's have a deal. You know, we should have a little yeah, talk but, about this. But I like that it depicts like a hard, hard-nosed coach, um, but he's not all about winning. He wants you to be – he wants them to get an education first and then move on um, with basketball – because it's about Richmond in California, so they're inner city kids and they're struggling in school. Um, so he's trying to get them to become men. And I like that at the end of the movie, they don't win. Um, I Like we talked about earlier, it's not really the cliche. And they won more so in becoming those people that Coach Carter wanted them to be. Now it's got some silly, goofy parts to it too. Channing Tatum's in the movie, which is funny to me. Um, but I just like it, and it's one of those nostalgia movies for me that makes it number one. Yeah, I I saw this movie in theaters when I was younger. I used to watch this all the time on TV. Coach Carter <laughs> was an excellent coach and a great person, mm-hmm. and that community was ridiculous. Yeah, they didn't want They it. were angry because he wanted them to maintain 2.0 GPAs. Yeah. And that he wanted them to wear cert- shirts and ties to games. Mm-hmm. It's just cr- it's crazy. Yeah. Just simple stuff that he wanted, and yeah. the community was angry. Yeah. Well, because they believed that because they were part of that city, they were never going to amount to anything. Mm. So it's a great movie to me. Joe, you're number one. We touched on it briefly. Uh, for me, the greatest sports movie ever made is Rocky, 1976. Even just the, <laughs> the – there we go. <laughs> The story of how it got made, uh, Sylvester Stallone insisting that, you know, he was trying to sell his script, but he was part of the package. And uh, studios were like, well, you're an unknown. We want to cast someone who's a box office draw. And he said, no deal. And so he fought to have this movie made. They shot sort of guerrilla style in Philadelphia. And it went on to win Best Picture, which Mm -hmm. that alone could be a movie of the making of Rocky. Um, Now, when you say... You know, Rocky, you could be referring to the entire franchise because everyone has their different favorite. I agree with you. I personally love Rocky Three with Mr. T yeah. and him being soft and, and uh, you know, taking Mr. T for granted and just getting his ass kicked and then having to get mentored and trained by, by Apollo to come back for the rematch. I absolutely love Rocky Three. It's a phenomenon. But I have many, many friends who say Rocky Four is their movie that, you know, Ivan Drago, uh, East versus West, all that stuff uh, is their favorite movie. Not a lot of people liked Rocky Five. Um, yeah, that's this a, a rough watch. But <laughs> is a rough I had people, you know, insisting that I watch Ra- Rocky Balboa because I had never that gotten around to seeing it. Movie. That's surprisingly good. great. Like, great speech in that movie. Yeah, the, the, that's how winning is done. Speech. That's a, yeah. per, a pretty uh, worthy addition to the Rocky franchise. And then, like you said, Creed is uh, continued that. So when I say Rocky, I could be talking about the entire franchise. Um, but you know, I. I Probably a few years ago, maybe it was during COVID, I wanted to revisit the first Rocky because I hadn't seen it in a long time. And, of course, you know, we're all familiar with its iconic moments of running up the steps and all that stuff. But when he's in the ring with Apollo and Apollo's being arrogant, he's got the red, white, and blue, you know, outfit on and everything. And then Rocky, like, knocks him on his butt. I found myself on my feet, like, sitting alone (laughs) on my couch, standing up and going, holy cow. Um, it has so many great moments like that that I, a lot of people agree with me. Rocky and its franchise just is is the uh, peak of sports movies. And to me, that's another one I just can't – I don't get behind it. Wow. That's yeah. Surprising. Like the franchise as a whole? Yeah. Wow. Oh, my I God. Just, I know. I, uh, that one hurts. I yeah. mean, that I'm hurts. not going to knock the movie. I, it's just not for me. I don't know. It's just never wow. clicked with me. It's never been – it's never been one that I – seek out to go watch even if it's on i 
I don't typically care. I don't. I'm I'm not like the biggest Sylvester Stallone fan to begin with. Um, like I'm not a huge fan of the Rambo series or anything. So like that might be part of it. Um, but it's just I don't know. It's not one that I really that is, get into. I feel personally attacked. <laughs> is, I knew I would have shocked shocking. some people. <laughs> that is, that's shocking. Yeah, Malik, your number one. Uh, my number one is a movie that was on his list. I think it was your number six, uh, A League of Their Own. Number one. Wow, that's, that's awesome. my number one. That surprises it, me. Throughout the years, like when I was younger, I would watch it and I would enjoy it. But as time has gone on, every time it's on, I jump in and I, from the John Lovitz stuff to every single character is just perfectly casted. The humor is perfect. The story of the women playing when the men are at war and them coming together as a team it seems like almost everybody in the movie is like at at their peak like everybody's firing on all cylinders i i just i love that movie it, every time it's on i'm watching it from start to finish <laughs> and it's 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 my favorite sports movie at this point that's wild that's yeah, awesome I, yeah I, I i love it man and that is why we chose to do sports movies today because we hardly had any overlap Right. And that's kind of what I was hoping for because sports movies are so, I feel like they're very niche and everybody has a nostalgic reason, kind of like how we talked about at the beginning, for why their sports movie is their favorite one. Whether it's because it you know was when they were younger or their time period or the sport that they liked or you know a multitude of reasons. And I think that's, that's what makes sports movies interesting because although they have cliches and all these different things, they all kind of turn out similarly. Everybody has their own favorite for different reasons and you guys brought up a number of titles that i'm gonna have to check out uh, there's a lot that just haven't been on my radar yeah yeah um so joe i thank you for uh coming on today thanks for having me that was fun sir being the movie guy <laughs> malik i don't know what we're doing next week um <laughs> we'll see if more news and notes I mean, comes we're, out. we're a few weeks away from football actually starting so well, football is actually tomorrow but i'm not talking about the hall of fame yeah. game next week so like, I, could, I, could, I could possibly start college football previews because yeah. week, week zero is like August 26th. Yeah. So yeah. maybe we'll do a half and half episode of maybe a little list and some sports news. We're getting close to thinking about fantasy too, so maybe some fantasy prep. Yeah, we can talk a little bit about that as well. Um, that'll be at the end of the month, which is going to be crazy. Um, but this has been Views from the Sidelines, and we will see you guys next time. It, it really hurts that you don't like Rocky. <laughs> you you, you got to figure it out, please.